Hey guys, Wade Paquin with The Build Show. On this episode, we're back on site for part three of our Costa build. Let's talk about these concrete piers behind me. So the important thing to note here is that we're building this house on a series of concrete piers because we are in a FEMA flood zone. We're just feet away from the Atlantic Ocean and that requires us to have a minimum elevation of 19 feet for our first floor framing. So with a 16 inch floor system here, our finished floor is gonna be around 21.5 when it's all said and done. Now, if you have not seen episode two of this build, go check that out. I talk about the grade beam construction, essentially the footings here on the project, um, how that was constructed, and the provisions that we put in place in the grade beams to make way for these concrete piers. Essentially, we left um, some one inch epoxy coated rebar dowels stubbed up vertically in the locations of all these concrete piers. So after we got uh, concrete placed in the grade beams, we were able to continue building those rebar cages for the concrete piers, formed them up, placed concrete, stripped them, and then moved on to these perimeter walls. Um, so super complex construction. There's absolutely nothing easy about building 35 concrete piers that are plumb in two directions to a very specific elevation and square to what will be your future framing. Uh, luckily our concrete subcontractor did an excellent job here as he has done with all of our past projects. So um, very unique construction. Let me go show you a couple details going on inside and some of the hold down methods that we're using to anchor the house to these concrete piers. Let's go. So here's a great example of the precision I was talking about with these concrete piers. This is a corner right here and going either direction, down this way, which is the south side, or this side, the east side, um, this pier right here is plumb in two directions. So the, the LVL beam is flush on either side of the column and straight going down. So all of these concrete piers are flush with the LVL beam. That's the same situation here, as well as around uh, the entire perimeter. So that attention to detail the uh, quality over speed model that we like to use around here pays off in these types of applications. Now if you look closely, you'll see a little non-shrink grout underneath that LVL beam. And the reason for that is because in the areas where we have steel beams sitting on some of these concrete piers, there's a steel plate that is welded and attached to um, rebar anchors into the concrete. And to level those, we had to leave them up um, above the top of concrete pier a little bit and fill it with non-shrink grout. So we took our highest concrete column, that was our boss, and then we leveled the deck from there. So anything um, with wood that required um, anything to be filled has some non-shrink grout into it. But let me hop up on the deck and show you guys some of the anchoring systems we're using to attach wood and steel to the structure. So the way we're anchoring the LVL beams to the concrete piers, if you see those two concrete piers with those long anchor bolts sticking out of them, those are embedded into the concrete three feet. And then as I zoom out over here, you can see uh, this LVL already uh, bolted down to the concrete pier. So the LVL is drilled to receive the anchor rod and then with those square washers and a big nut, we'll crank those down and that will hold uh, the LVL beams in place. Now let me hop down and show you how we're connecting the steel beams to the concrete piers. So the steel beam and steel column connections to concrete piers, whether the tall piers or the shorter ones, are the same. Obviously these shorter ones are more accessible, so I'll use this as, a, as an example. But you can see these plywood templates we used, um, and we just did that so we could set these six rebar anchors, these dowels, into the concrete pier without it interfering or conflicting with the rebar reinforcement for the concrete pier itself. Now obviously the plywood's gonna come off, and in its place we'll be putting a half inch steel plate that will be pre-drilled so these rebar dowels can slide right through the plate. The hole in the plate will be bigger than the rebar, so we'll be able to plug weld the plate to the dowel, and then we'll grind that flat, and it'll leave a nice, smooth, flat surface for the uh, steel beams and steel columns to be welded to. So now you have a full connection from your steel beam or column to the concrete pier. 
really cool detail. Now you guys may have noticed these vents around the perimeter of the foundation. This is a FEMA flood zone requirement. It's called a smart vent and the way it works is it has louvers in it and those louvers open and close based on two things. Temperature which is uh, controlled by a bimetal coil in the unit. So that coil can expand and contract based on temperature. So 75 degrees, the louver's fully open. 35 degrees, it's closed. 55 degrees, obviously half open. Then there's also a float mechanism in there. So um, in the event of a flood, the float will activate and will fully open the louver. It's all 316 stainless steel. We're gonna keep it protected. Um, until later in the project. So, um, very cool uh, flood vent technology. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode and checking out this very unique complex foundation system. Stay tuned for part four as we dive into the framing side of this project. In the meantime, make sure you guys are following us on Instagram, WKP underscore construction. And if you want to follow this particular project, it's hashtag JTN Beachside Custom. We'll see you guys soon right here in the Build Show.